Now let's talk about three methods for improving decision tree methods. I'm going to talk about these in the context primarily of regression, but you can also extend each of these into the case of classification. These are all known as ensemble methods. Ensemble, of course, being together. So these are methods where you combine multiple models of the same type uh, to make some sort of overall improved model. We already talked about bagging. In bagging, you have your training data x and y, and from this you make bootstrap samples, let's say x, y, 1 through x, y, b. And for each of those, you make a model, f hat 1 through f hat b. So these are bootstrap samples, which again, we, we draw from our original data set with replacement and we just simply want some subsamples. These are all of some size. And we, assuming these are all the same size bootstrap, uh, bootstrap sample, we simply make f to be 1 over b, the sum of the f b's, b equals 1 to b. So it's literally the average. Again, the idea here is that if each of these models has a certain var variance sigma squared, then f hat should have variance sigma squared over b, because if these are equally distributed, identically distributed independent random variables, and you average them, the variance goes down by that factor. So that's bagging. Bagging is very simple. However, it's not so great in the sense that um, if you have a single feature which is really driving the regression, then each of these models is probably going to pick that out. And in fact, it might be that you're basically averaging the same model over and over and over again. Here's a simple example of this. Suppose you want a nuanced model of things that lead to early mortality. You might be collecting all sorts of, maybe dozens and dozens or hundreds of medical criteria about different patients. But as it happens, every single model simply says that smoking and obesity lead to higher mortality. Well, that's fine, and to its own extent, it's certainly true. However, you're never going to learn more nuanced things about other more subtle effects because they're all washed out by the fact that every model picks up in the same overwhelming signal. So if you want to get more nuanced pictures, get models which are, it can pick up more subtle variations, then in some sense you want to force the models to not keep picking up the same details. That's the idea behind random forests. So a random forest is, is the following idea. You have your training data x, y. And what we'll do is, again, we will do a bootstrap procedure, breaking it up into subsamples x1, y1, through xb, yb. So we'll do this bootstrap sampling procedure. The key change happens when we build the model. So here's what we're going to do. Let's choose a certain psi, a certain number of predictors that they're allowed to use. So suppose that x involves p predictors. This is an n by p array, and this is uh, uh, responses of length n, one for each input input point. So let's choose a maximum number of predictors let's call that M experience suggests that you want M to be approximately square root of P when you're doing this baking procedure assuming especially if you're dividing these and you know you're not dividing the end data points into B but sampling from it B times into roughly equal size uh, bootstrap subsamples. So if these are all equally sized in such a way that their total size is roughly n, then m is approximately root p makes sense. And the idea here is that when you build, say, model fb, at some layer, so remember we're making trees here as our layers, at some layer, choose 
M of the of the um, P predictors to use. So choose only M. So instead of building a tree that you use that checks all M predictors, let's just uh, sorry all P predictors. Let's choose a random subset M of those P, and then of those we will build a model. If you think about it, what's happening here is that we're building a tree, but instead of saying, okay, I'm going to search across um, my data points in some sort of searching way, and one for each dimension, and then by the depth of the tree, in fact, what you're going to be doing is actually only searching in M dimensions at each layer of the tree. So you're actually dropping down that number P by quite a bit. In fact, this is per uh, bag, so let's actually say that these that these bootstrap samples are of size n, where again n is roughly n over b. So this is now a log n, but we want to do this b times. So one thing that's interesting about random forest procedures is that although it's you know it's d times m times log n times b. If you think about it, once you do the bootstrap sampling, you can parallelize over that over those b different terms. So in fact, it's it's this uh, overall order, but it's extremely parallelizable on the b. And so really, if you have b processors, say you have ten cores in your computer and you do ten bootstrap samples, then you're actually only doing this much work on each one. So in some sense, it could actually be faster than doing a standard decision tree because you can break it up in a more uh, in, a, in a ready way. Anyway, the point here is that by choosing predictors at random for each um, for each layer of each tree that you're building, it's unlikely statistically that multiple models will keep picking up that same predictor. So if you have predictors like um, like you know smoking or or measurements of obesity versus you know how much steak someone eats versus other factors how much they run every day whether or not they have girl scout cookies for lunch every day things like that each model at each layer is likely to pick up a different variable so a very dominant variable might be picked up once or twice but you'll also see the nuance of the other more subtle features so this is called a random forest Again, at the end, you're essentially going to average these models, but the idea is that the average is across a more diverse collection of trees. Now, interestingly, there's also something called an extremely random forest or an exceptionally random forest, and that's where when you build the tree, you're not only um, you're not searching for the best cutoff; you're simply just uh, picking any random cutoffs. So if you really just want to like search every possible decision tree and optimize it across all of them. What you do is just literally just pick any cutoffs you want at every layer and do it all at random, make a lot of copies, and let them sort themselves out um, in terms of their error analysis. But random forests in this form are quite effective because they're going to find both big effects quickly with high probability, but they'll also pick up on smaller effects and give, to, give more nuanced models that aren't as redundant as a classic bagging procedure. Okay, finally I want to talk about boosting. So boosting is a simple idea, which is actually similar to the idea that we had back when we talked about lasso at Lars, of learning slowly. So the idea is that you can avoid overfitting if you build your model gradually. So here's the procedure. Let's, uh, again, let's take um, our data XY and we will again do a bootstrap procedure to split it into capital B different subsamples with replacement, a bootstrap sample. But what we're going to do is instead of just building all the models and averaging them in some way, like both uh, bagging and random forest did, what we're going to do is build an incremental model and build all the different models level by level in a way which gradually builds the layers. 
Okay, so here's the procedure. It's going to be a loop. So one, set the model equal to zero. If you have a, if your model is equal to zero, then you, then your residual of the model. Again, we're talking about regression here. The residual of the model is of course y i on the ith entry is y i minus f hat of x i, which is of course y i because our model is currently zero. Now what we're going to do is two for each bootstrap sample. Let's build a tree, f hat little b, um, of some depth. So fix a depth of small depth d. I don't want this tree to be too deep. Otherwise, we're going to be overfitting already. So let's make a depth maybe two um, on this data. So but you fit the data not x versus y, but x versus the residual. Again, that's the same idea as what we did for um, for lasso lars, where you have you fit it against the residual, not against the original data, and then you update f hat. You you replace f hat with f hat plus lambda this f hat b, where lambda is small. So you don't want to overwhelm the existing model. Maybe lambda is a tenth or a hundredth. So you add, you make sort of a differential or an incremental change to your model. You update the residuals, of course. So the new residual is, of course, the old residual minus the updated prediction. So that's easy to update once you have this model. And you loop through all the models and do this layer by layer by layer. And then finally, you output the full model F. So the idea is that you build each of the trees to a certain depth. And don't drill them too deep, but now let each of these make a small impact on F. And then we're going to build them all a bit more and add that to F. Again, times some small factor. And again, but each time we don't fit to the original data, we fit to the residual of what's left. So we're learning the difference from what the model already predicts to what it predicts next. The last remark I want to make in this video is that of these three procedures, bagging or bootstrap averaging, and random force and boosting, these are all ensemble methods for trees, but if you think about it for a moment, both bagging and boosting are very general in the sense they do not require a tree, they actually work on any sort of method. Of course, random forest is inherently tied to the idea of a tree, so hence the name forest, but bagging and boosting are actually very general procedures that apply in a wide variety. You could, for instance, do bagging or boosting on linear models or on quadratic models or logistic models or any sort of regression model you might, you might imagine.